morning. It is a beautiful and a wonderful day today. It's the day that the Lord has made and today we want to thank God for this awesome and, and, and one of a kind opportunity to be alive and even to share in His Word. Thank you for keeping it KTN. Thank you for joining Command Your Morning. And it's my prayer that you become consistent if you're joining us today for the very first time. I have the Word of God for you today and we will worship then I'll come back with the Word of God. You are blessed. Amen. It's always wonderful to soak in the presence of God. And um, I know you are blessed. I know you are blessed. Today's word is um, the secret place. The secret place. One of the greatest inheritance that I want to leave to my children is the gift of a presence. Not my presence to them, but teaching them how to seek the presence of God. I want to I want to I want to seek the presence of God like a madman. I want to run after God. And that is one of the greatest one of the greatest inheritances uh, besides receiving the Lord Jesus that I want to leave for my children and for my generation. It is a wonder how man has been made and 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 the things that man is going through yet God has given us one of a kind gift that I call the gift of access. So to understand the secret place and how we can be at the secret place, first of all, I want us to, to, to get to know and to understand this, that God has given us access to himself. One of the greatest things that we have as believers in Jesus Christ is the one thing that I call access. I've interacted with people from different religions, and people from different groups, and they cannot just approach their God like that. Some of them, their God cannot even talk. Their God cannot move. Their God cannot, does not even have flesh. You know, some of them, their God has just things that they have built, they have made, but still access to their God is something that is very valuable. Brethren, let me encourage you. You have such a precious commodity that we have been given. It is called the, the presence of God. I always try to imagine the 400 years between the book of Malachi and, and, and the beginning of John the Baptist. The 400 years where the Bible, where we are told that it was silent. Theologians tell us that, that, that God never spoke in those times. He, spoke to, he never spoke to them and asked them to write anything. For 400 years, people lived and they did not hear the voice of God. That, that can be terrifying. And maybe there's someone here today who, 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 who you are not hearing the voice of God. You've not started or you've not begun to hear the voice of God. You're wondering how can one hear the voice of God. Today, by the Spirit of God, your ears will pop open and you'll begin to hear the voice of God in the name of Jesus. One of the gifts that we have as believers is the gift of access. Access. It's called access. 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 Um, there's access that God has given us. There's two kinds of access. Number one access is the kind where it allows uh, the family or the, the household of God to be able to interact with, the, with God, to be able to live in God, to move in God, that, that when you become a believer, you have access to him. Because now the Bible says that, that we cry out because of his spirit that is within us. We cry out, Abba, Father. In other words, we have received adoption as sons. So we are family. So as sons, we have access to him. We have access to his spirit. He has poured himself to us. So if you are a believer, you have access by virtue that now you have become the son of God. You have confessed Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, and God has given you access. You are born of the Spirit. You're no longer born from, 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 human, from human strength or from human dynamics, but you have been born from the Spirit. You are born of God. You have overcome the world. Why? Because you are born of God, and that is an access that you have received. So you cry out, Abba, Father. God speaks to you because he, you are his child. You are his daughter, his son. You, you, so he speaks speaks to you. He speaks to you because you are family. That's the first access that we have. It is the access that is granted to those that are righteous. Those that are righteous means that they are born again. You are righteous. You have now become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are given access. You have access to God. The second, and this one I know because I grew up in Mukuru, the slums, and in Mukuru, the slums, most of my friends were shot dead because uh, we are easy. And I know that at Ayo Akati, when we were smoking weed to Kivuta Bangi, in those times, 
I know that there are prayers that we would make because even in those times you would trust that God will protect us so that we are not arrested. So you'd find things come together and they pray and they tell God, God watch over us that we may not. In other words, just because you are not born again does not mean that God will not listen to you. Okay, I once said something here. I once said that God is with everyone, but with these people, he is with them specifically. So if you are born again, you have access to him. He is with you specifically. If you are not born again, God is everywhere. He's omnipotent and he hears your prayer. And that's why sometimes he hears the prayers and you hear people who are not born again. They made certain prayers and God heard them. All of us have access to God. In other words, when you're here, you can ask questions. You can talk to God. Um, you can talk to him. Um, you can hear his heart out. You can, you can get to know. See, in the Old Testament, before the Spirit of God began to dwell in man um, permanently, it was a requirement to inquire of God. It was a requirement to inquire of God. In those days, you would come before people. Even in those days, we never used to have a, uh, prophets who prophesy and things don't happen. If you'd prophesy, they would wait for you. Whichever number of years, if it would not happen what you said by your mouth, then they would stone you. That was the custom. In other words, they valued the men of God. They valued the voice of God. In those days, it was mandatory for men to inquire of God. In fact, Saul, and I'll show you here in... in, in, in um, in Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 10, verses 14. Let me read from verse 13. 1 Chronicles chapter 10, this is the story of Saul and David later comes into the picture. The Bible says from verse 13 of chapter 10 of 1 Chronicles, the Bible says, So Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord. In other words, alienda kinyume naneno lambwana. Praise Jesus. Against the word of the Lord, which he kept not also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. In other words, Saul got to a place he was so frustrated, God was not speaking to him. And the Bible tells us that, that, that he was so frustrated that he went and he looked for someone that had a familiar spirit. He went to a witch to inquire of the witch. Let me tell you something. I know there are people that have even met believers who they used to, they're believers, but they still go to inquire of the witches. The Bible says God was angry at him because of that. He died of the sins that he had done. And because of that, God rejected him. Because you have access to God. Why would you go and inquire of other men? Why would you go and find out what the spirit of other people, of the devil is saying through other people? And you know what? Today we have people living in the church who inquire of everyone else but God. When they run into trouble, either they do not believe that God will answer or God will approve of what they are saying. And so it pushes them and they talk with everyone else but God. I have so many times caught myself in that act. And every time I catch myself in that act, I rebuke myself and I come back and I say, Spirit of God, what are you saying about this situation? What, what are you telling me, Jesus? God, what is your mind concerning what's happening? And so the Bible says, verse 14, to inquire of it and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore he slew him and turned the kingdom unto David the son of Jesse. So the Bible is telling us in verse 14 that Saul lost his kingdom because he had a habit of not inquiring from God. Not inquiring from God. So I want you to know that inquiring from God is such an important thing. He died because of that. Praise Jesus. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verses 9, the Bible says, In those days, if people wanted a message from God, they would say, Let us go and ask a seer, for the prophets used to be called seers in those days. 1 Samuel chapter 9, verses 9. You read the old covenant, you'll see them, you'll see the believers in those days or um, the, the Jews in those days, the, the, the people that existed in those days saying, let us inquire of a seer. Why? Because the seer had access to God. And when they had access to God, that means that they had access to solutions. They had access to, to future, to what was going to happen. They had access to information concerning what God was going to do and concerning the will of God. Remember, Saul lost 
uh, the father, Saul's father, lost, they lost their kettles and they sent who? They sent Saul to go and look for them. And when Saul went, he met the prophet somewhere and the seer told him where to find the things. Told him, go this direction and you will find that which you're looking for. So they had access to God. Can I put it to you in this way? You too, you have access to God. You have access to God. You have access to God. God has given. In these last times, the Bible tells us, and we are going to see it. We're going to see it. In these last days that he has spoken to us. Hebrews chapter 1 verses 2. Hebrews chapter 1 verses 2. Listen to what the Bible says. He has in these last days spoken unto us by his son, who he has appointed heir of all things. In other words, God has in these last days spoken to us by his son. So he that has a son, he that has a son, if you are born again, I want you to know that you have access, the same access that the seers has, you have that access because you, he speaks to us through his son, Jesus Christ, in these last days. Now, I know that, 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 that there are believers who move from one place to another place, move from one church to another church because they want to hear the voice of God. They want to hear what God is saying. I know of people who in the last two years, they have moved from seven churches from this church to the other church. If they hear that pastor, that man of God sees, they move there. They do not know that they themselves, that God has in this last day spoken to us. In other words, now, I am not saying that you do not go to hear from God, from other men of God. You can inquire from, from men of God. There are men of God that hear the voice of God in a way like no other. Uh, there are men of God that have prophetic utterances that come forth with power, with miracles, and with everything. But I want you to know that you are not an orphan. God has also spoken to you. In these last days, he has spoken to us through his son, Jesus Christ. And do you know what he's telling you? He's telling you that I've now put the same pedestal like this. And so, the way the prophets used to hear the prophets of old, the way the new prophets today, the new school prophets here, the way the apostles here, the way your pastors here, I have put the platform to be the same. So no one has a higher platform. No one has a higher ranking of hearing from God or from the Spirit. I have spoken all to all of you through my son, Jesus Christ. We are still talking about the secret place. We are still talking about the secret place. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verses 18. I want you to know that you hear from God. I want you to know that God has given you access to him. Access to hear his voice. Access to dwell in his presence. Access to be one with him. Access to carry the fullness of God. Access. God has given you access. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 18, the Bible says, For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. Through Jesus Christ we both have access to the Father. We have access to the Father. Through him we both have access to the Father. First Samuel um, chapter 19, there's a story there that I would want you to go and read. In fact, I think we'll read it later. But, but just write it down and I want you to go and read it. First Samuel chapter 19 from verses 20. I'd want you to go and read it. We might refer to it. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 verses 19, Therefore, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, we have confidence. We have confidence. We have confidence to enter. To enter. When you talk to your father, today as we talk about the, the, the holy of holies or the secret place of God, as we talk about it, I want you to know that what God has given you is called boldness. It is called confidence so that you may enter into that place. That you may enter into that place. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 verses 19, therefore since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus. Oh, are you born again today? If you are born again today, then you can dwell in the secret place. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 19. I'll read so many scriptures. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 19. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are God's household. In other words, you are not a stranger if you are born again. You can live in the secret place because you are not a stranger. You are not a stranger. You have received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. You are no longer a stranger. You are together with us who are citizens in the household of God. In the household of God. Psalms, the Bible says in the book of Psalms, Psalm 65, I'll read Psalm 65 verses 4. Psalm 65 verses 4. Listen to what the Bible says. Remember we are still talking about 
the secret place. Psalm 65 verses 4. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto you that he may dwell in your court and shall be satisfied with the goodness of your household. Blessed is the man that you choose to dwell. In other words, God has given you access, so you are blessed. And what happens when you begin to dwell in that place? When you dwell in the courts of God, the Bible says that he shall satisfy you with the goodness of his house. The goodness of the house of God. Things that money cannot buy. Things that money can buy. Life eternal. The freshness of life. The Bible says that you are blessed because he has chosen you in the name of Jesus to do what? To dwell in the courts of God. And because you dwell in the courts of God, the Bible says he will satisfy you with the goodness, with the goodness of the holy temple. Hmm. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Let us move to Psalms 91, which is our scripture, our theme scripture for today. Psalms 91. Let us look at how, how, how. The Bible says, Psalms 91, I'll begin uh, the, from the first Psalm. The Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of Almighty. If you dwell in the secret place of God, then your place of abiding is under the shadow of Almighty. It, it's a place of protection. Protection. Now, if you are under God, anyone that wants to attack you must first attack God. Praise Jesus. That's why I believe no one can bewitch me because no one can bewitch God. Why? Because constantly I know it in my mind, I know it in my spirit that I live, I dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. And because I'm under the shadow of Almighty, wherever I am, it is covered. Hey, the shadow covers a bigger space. The shadow covers a bigger space. And everything that is under a shadow is protected from the ray of the sun. Is protected from the heat. Whenever the sun is too hot, we carry umbrellas. Why? So that the umbrella can provide a shadow for us. And I came to tell you today that if you choose, if you choose in your heart to dwell in the secret place, then you will abide in the safest place. The Bible says that place is under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2 says, I I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. I will abandon myself and say, he is my God in whom will I trust. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. Do you know what a refuge is? A refuge is a place where people run to whenever there's trouble. Whenever there's trouble, a refuge is a place that people run to. And in Kenya here, we understand it so much because we have refugee camps all over. That's a refuge. That's a refuge. And when God becomes your refuge, the people that are in Kakuma, they are not attacked. Their lives are safe. Their lives are safe because even as war is happening in their country, they are far away from their country. The war in their country does not come to them. They are refuge. If I take refuge in your house, in your home, it means that I have escaped something and I've come into a place of safety. And so the Bible says, huh, that is my refuge and my fortress. My fortress, no one can just come, no one can just climb. In other words, I am seated on a strong foundation and something stronger is guiding me. I will say of the Lord, remember, it is I that will say. In other words, it is your choice. It is a decision that you consciously make to say, I will say of the Lord. He's my refuge and he's my fortress. Verse 3 says, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall deliver you from diseases, from sicknesses, from, the con from pyramid schemes that come to con you. In other words, as you desire to move in certain direction, he will be coming to you and he will be saying, no, 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 no. This is a fowler snare. This is a snare. A snare is something that is put in integral, something that is put to trap you. And the Bible says that he shall deliver you from the snares. He shall deliver you and he will hide you with his feathers. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His trust, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. Hmm. And they and thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor the arrow that flieth by day. Let me explain what these two, these two lines mean. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror 
by night, nor the arrow that flight by day. The other verse says, He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall trust. His truth shall be thy shield. His truth shall be thy shield. We know that in the New Testament, when the Bible talks to us about the armor of God, when the Bible gets to the belt, it says the belt of truth, which is the word of God. So the truth is the word of God. The only thing that holds you together is the word of God. And the Bible says that the reality of this truth, the Bible says that his truth shall be your shield and your buckler. In other words, the reality of the truth of God shall be your shield and your buckler. Do you know what that means? Huh. When diseases come, when sicknesses come, then the truth comes in. And what does the truth say? The truth says that by his stripes you are healed. That is the truth. And that's how that truth becomes a buckler, becomes a shield around you. In other words, it says, if you dwell under me, then my word will begin to work for you. When the Bible says you are the head and you know the tail. When the Bible says in, in, in the book of Chronicles that, that the works of your hands are blessed. When the blessings of God are pronounced over your life. If you dwell in the secret place of God, then his word will be your shield and your buckler. He says in verse 5, you shall not be afraid. So you will not be afraid. Let me tell you, many people are afraid today. Today, I meet so many people. Every time I'm in a taxi, I'm in a plane, I'm, I'm in a bus, I'm in a matatu, wherever I am. And you start up a conversation with someone. One of the words that you will hear first is that, what well, the economy is so tough in Kenya. You know, people are going bankrupt. Companies are closing. Things are bad. I tell you this. If you can dwell in the secret place of God, you will be exempted. That's what the Bible says. You will be exempted. You will not be afraid of what arrow that comes by night or even those attacks that come by the day. Why? You will be. People can be fired from where you're working. The same business that you're doing, you know, they, it can run out of market. But for you, you will be preserved and you will be preserved in the name of Jesus. Why? Because you have made him your hiding place. I'll, I'll jump to verse 7. Verse 7 says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near you. Again, you are exempted. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. For thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most, habit, even the most high, your habitation. Now, when you make the Lord your, 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 your refuge, and you make him your habitation, what happens then is that now you are protected and you are exempted. That's what the Bible says. The truth of the kingdom, the realities begin to work for you. Why? Because you have made him your habitation. There shall no evil befall you, verse 10. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash your foot against a stone. Hmm. Listen to me, that he has, keep, he has given his angel charge over you. So in other words, if you hit your leg on a stone, who is account, accountable? It's the angels. The Bible says that he will make sure that you do not go astray, you do not fall, you do not invest in a wrong business, in a wrong place. Why? Because you have made him your dwelling. Uh -huh. The Bible says in verse 14, which is where I want to close with, because he has set his love upon me, there will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. So two things. Set your love upon God. Number two, know the name of God. Love God. Love God. The Bible says because he has known my name. Because he has known my name. So now I will. I will protect him. I will protect him. I will protect him. So verse number 14. Genuinely love God actively. Don't just love God. Love him actively. Love him actively. Verse number 14 again, part B, know his name. Some of you know him as the provider. Uh, um, um, sh um, some of you know him as, you know, as, as God who, who, who heals. But there's a place that you can know him and continually grow in your knowledge of knowing him so that you can get to a place where you know him in his fullness. You know him in his fullness. So number one, make him. Make him your dwelling place. Set your mind upon him. Number two, love him genuinely and actively and progressively. Number three, know his name progressively. Know his name progressively. And you will constantly be under the shadow of the Almighty, which is the secret place that Psalms 91 talks about. We are going for a short break, and when we come back, I'll pray for you. Amen.
It's my prayer that you will consider giving your life to Jesus today if you're not born again. If you are born again, it is my prayer for you that you will consider hiding under the shadow of the Almighty. That you will know that there's a refuge for you. He is a fortress for you. And he has wings spread wide open, full of the shadow that is called the shadow of the Almighty. And he just wants to hide and cover you. Stop fighting by your strength. Allow God to fight for you. When you are under God, people have to go through God to come to you. If you're not born again, I want to pray with you. It's a simple prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you came, that you died, and that you rose again on the fourth day, on the third day. And today, I give you my life. I confess you as my Lord and as my Savior. I receive your love. I'm born again from today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have made that prayer, you are born again. You are completely born again. Look for a Bible-believing church. You can, you can, you know, there, there are many churches that come to command your morning. You can locate one of us and, 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 and just come. And just come and be disciples and tune in to command your morning every morning so that you will grow spiritually. I want to pray for those that are fighting battles on their own. Those that are saying, I want to make the Lord my dwelling place. I want to make him. I want to consciously make him my dwelling place. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus... I love you. Spirit of God, help me to love God genuinely, actively. Spirit of God, help me to know God progressively in the name of Jesus. Today, I make you, Lord Jesus, my fortress. I make you my refuge. I dwell under your shadow today, myself, my family. I dwell under your shadow today in the name of Jesus. I make you my fortress. I make you my rock. I come under the shadow of the Almighty today. I love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have made that prayer, it has happened in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Jehovah. We exalt you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You are blessed. Keep it KTN. Keep it command your morning. You are blessed.